Um, your location to worship the Lord on His holy Sabbath day. I'd like to give you an opportunity to be a blessing to the person in front of you, behind you, to the left and to the right, and wish them a happy Sabbath. Today is a very, very special Sabbath day in which we get to uh, remember and celebrate the Lord's Supper. I'd um, like to also bring your attention to the fact that after our worship service, which will conclude with uh, communion service, there will be a fellowship lunch in the BLC. You are invited to stay by. But also, you might notice that there are some things happening right in front of your eyes. I'd like to give Bill the opportunity to share some things. Good morning, church family. They are putting a slide up for us here so you can see. But uh, did you noticing, notice anything when you walked into church today? <laughs> yes, people have been working and been working hard and uh, the work's not over yet but uh, let's see if I can get my clicker to work here go ahead and advance it there Greg there is uh, the photo on the left that's Pastor Tony up getting closer to heaven of course, we do like our pastor close to heaven. Amen. Were you doing a lot of praying up there too? Without ceasing. Without ceasing. <laughs> you can't see it at the bottom of the ladder is Dennis Mason Amen. holding the base. Uh, he, had, he had good support. Amen. And uh, there is part of the crew that helped remove the carpet. And... Uh, it was a very busy day for this crew. And not everyone is pictured there. That's the one that I was able to get my hands on. All we can say is a big thank you to those that uh, participated. In that crew, there was uh, four of them who weren't even members of our local church. Several of them were not even uh, baptized members of our church, but just friends. But uh, we have more to do. You might recall this iconic photo. <laughs> well, <laughs> we want you. We will have a work beat tomorrow to continue painting and so forth at 9 o'clock. Uh, we're hoping that maybe the next week may be a big push where we uh, finish up a, uh, uh, doing some sheetrocking and electrical work. And so we're wanting to push and get us over the hill and get us finished. And uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, that's the part we're looking at, whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Everyone that's helping, whether physically or with their uh, uh, prayers of support, it helps us to do this to the glory of God. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing this for God's glory. And, uh, and so tomorrow, please come if you can. But also, uh, this morning when we have our morning prayer, we'll probably ask you to stand because the floor is not the best place to kneel on it right now. But thank you for your consideration and your, uh, your patience with us. We probably will not have carpet on the floor for several more weeks, but uh, the crew was there and they were ready to do it. We said, praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless each and all of you.
You started seeing something on the screen before uh, the report on the building project. Um, and that has everything to do with the 10 days of prayer, which will be starting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. This Wednesday at 7 p.m. we'll have with us Melody Mason coming from the General Conference and uh, we'll be so glad. She's the author of the book Dare to Ask for More and uh, she'll be sharing with us nightly from the, thir from the 10th to the 13th. So make plans. Maybe you're sensing that the Lord is wanting to do something bigger in your life this year. Maybe um, there, there's, there's a growth that you're hungry for. And uh, this is our opportunity to seek the Lord, to start the year with the Lord and with one another. So that'll start Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, on the 27th of this month, there will be a musical Vespers presented by the Women's Ministries. And uh, this will be an event in which we're inviting all of our sister churches to participate as well to join us. And if you'd like to be able to uh, participate in an active role such as sharing a song or uh, whether um, singing or instrumental or if you know someone who'd like to do that or if you'd like to volunteer them, um, you can call uh, Pat Jackson or Margaret Parker. Pat Jackson you can reach at 541-730-435 and Margaret at 671-266. But we've come here to work. Lord, the Bible says as we transition to that, Psalms 135, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise him, O ye servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good, praise unto his name, it is pleasant. May we continue worshiping our God. Good morning, family. Very happy to all of you. So I was reflecting on lesson this week and the importance of being a steward and serving others. And talking in our Sabbath class this morning, sometimes on the we get focused on identity. And as I was through the word first this morning, I had a wonderful opportunity if we would focus on heavenly fear and know that all of the riches are with him in heaven. Take your hymn book this morning and turn to hymn number 468 and we're going to sing the first and last stanza. forward to hymn number 338, Redeemed. And we'll sing the first and last stanzas here as well.
we prepare to go into our worship service, our hymn of praise is Open My Eyes That I May See. It's on hymn number 326. And will you please stand together with me as we sing all three stanzas. your presence to be with us today. Open our eyes, our ears, let us hear the message, let us be inspired for your service. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Our offering today is for our uh, local church budget. Before we ask the deacons to stand, I'd like to recount a story in the Old Testament for you, something that I find real interesting. It's found in Exodus on chapters 25 and 26, and I'm just gonna bring out a, two or three little high points here. And if you recall, this is about the time the children of Israel were building the sanctuary. And verse 4 of chapter 20, or 35 says, And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is a thing that the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring an offering to the Lord of gold, silver, and bronze. Then skipping down to um, uh, chapter, or verse 20, it says, all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. 
Then everyone whose heart was stirred, everyone whose spirit was willing, they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of the meeting for all its services and all the holy garments. So what do I hear, see here in some of the, the key words? This was a thing of the Lord commanding, saying, take it from you an offering of those who are, have a willing heart. A willing heart? The other one I see here, they came with their hearts were stirred. Everyone's spirit was willing and they brought an offering to the Lord. Now moving over towards the end of this project, in verse uh, chapter 36, we have Moses again uh, in the forefront here, and it says, they received from Moses. Now who are they? If you read the, through the chapter, it's the workmen. They received <clears throat> from Moses an offering that the children of Israel had brought for their work. And so they continued bringing him offering. Who is they here? This is the people. They're continued bringing offerings for every morning. And they were free will offerings. Then the craftsmen who were doing all the work in the sanctuary came each morning from doing his work, each one from doing his work. And they spoke to Moses, say, the people bring much more than enough than is needed. And so Moses had to tell the people they didn't have to bring any more. And the material that they had was indeed sufficient for all the work that was done. Indeed, too much. Wish we could say that about our church budget. We had too much, but we can't. So I want each one of you to think about what can I do to help our local church. Would the deacons please stand? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the many things that you have given to us for the opportunity to, to share these things. And we pray now that this offering will go and for the work in this church in this area. In thy name, amen.
Would you stand with me for the morning prayer this morning? Father, we come to you today in your presence, and we ask for your blessing to be with us. We have much to be thankful for. This warm, comfortable place to worship, our families around us, there is much contention in the world around us, both internationally and here at home. But we do have liberties, and we thank you for those blessings. As well, we have our own membership here in our congregation. We're thankful for that. We have missing members. We want to remember those that are discouraged and missing from our fellowship. We have those that are ill. We want to especially remember John Lee and the Rollins. Please lift their spirits. Remind them that you are their God. As well, we want to remember in our worship service and in this time, our pastor and his family. Please be with them as well. Lift them up. In our own congregation there are those that have special needs some that we may not know of we ask that you be with them our educational programs roseburg junior academy milo academy and our other schools scattered around the country and around the world we ask that you be with the faculty at those schools and at the students and with our youth as well here at our in our church we have a special program coming up starting the middle of this week with the 10 days of prayer we ask that you your spirit be with us and in those meetings lift lift us up and so that we will be ready when you come and so that we as well as as many as possible can be reunited with you we ask these things in your name Amen. The scripture, the scripture this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. It reads as following, But all of this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled song called Abide With Me, and I love the old hymns. They are so... What? Oh, Amelda went to get it. <laughs> we need the thumb drive, I guess. Anyway, it is my privilege to sing with Amelda. She has an amazing range. <laughs> she, singed, she sung that really high part, and now today she's singing really low. And I was surprised that she could do that. <laughs> Please pray for us because our voices are struggling. Yeah. I'm about to cough, but I hope the angel of the Lord will sing. And let's ponder upon the message of the song because it's very important for us, especially that we're facing struggles in life.
Thank you so much, ladies. You know, life is kind of like the starting of that special music. Things kind of don't go as planned. And you, you, you move forward by faith, trusting that God will sort it out. And he always does. Let us bow our heads as we get into the morning message. Loving Father, we thank you because you have given us life in Jesus, our Lord. We thank you that today we can come to you and be fed. We can come to you and be filled. We can come to you and be changed. And Father, we ask that we may not be content with yesterday, with last year, with last month, or even last Sabbath. May you fill us and move us and do a new thing in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. The God that we have is one who takes the initiative to be with you and with me. I'll say that again. The God that we have is the one who takes the initiative to be with you and with me. Bottom line, God wants to be with you. And he wants to be with me. I mean, we're talking about the king of all creation. The king of the universe wants to be with you. Wow. That's amazing. That blows my mind. We read in the Bible where God tells his people back in the times of old in Exodus 25, verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary that I may what? Dwell among them. In the very beginning, it was a little different. You see, man enjoyed open communication with God. God had told them, of every tree of the garden you may eat, but there is one little tree. Now that tree you want to stay away from, because if you were to eat from that tree, oh, bad things are coming. In the day you eat thereof, you will what? You will surely die. And sure enough, the immortal man that God had originally created became mortal and his days did come to an end. But yet after that initial sin, we find a God who doesn't say, oh, well, that's too bad for mankind. No, we see a God who's walking through the midst of the garden and he has a question that goes like this. Where are you? We used to be so, so close. Where are you? I miss being with you. I miss that closeness. Where are you? Wasn't that long ago in which everybody was wearing red and green and saying things like Merry Christmas in which we were wishing each other these, these wonderful desires in light of the fact that the greatest gift of all had come, Jesus, in the incarnation. He comes to this earth because his plan is to make a payment. What was that payment? Of his own life to save you and to save me, to get close to you, and to get close to me. What's interesting is that this same Jesus, the one who wants to be close to us, we see him praying at the closure of his earthly ministry. And he's at a place where all of his disciples were, were, were present, except one, and then there was three that were even closer to him. And he's praying, and he's being crushed. He's being crushed because my sins 
are on his shoulder. He's being crushed because your sins are on his shoulders. And the sins of anyone who's ever lived or would live are crushing him. He's sweating drops of blood. And he's telling his father, is there any other way to save mankind but not my will, but thy will be done. He's finishing these, this prayer session and he's hearing the footsteps of Judas and the chief priests and religious leaders arrive on the scene. And the wonderful company that he had of the three and the rest of the disciples, they're no longer there. I guess they had something better to do. They weren't there. Why? Because maybe this Messiah guy, maybe he wasn't the one who we thought he was. Or maybe if we hang around too close with Jesus, we'll end up just like him. And by the looks of it, what we see isn't anything good because this looks like this is just going from bad to worse. So before we get incarcerated, before we get killed, we got somewhere else to be. And just like Joseph, his brothers forsake him. I'd like to say that the progression of this story is that everybody comes back. But no, actually it gets worse because what we see next is how Jesus had told Peter already that before what happens, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me Thrice, three times, he said. And what's interesting about Peter is that he's asked a question. And a question that goes like this. Don't you know Jesus? No, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't that's not me. I don't know him. That's some other guy. I don't know Jesus. The irony of that situation is that Peter a few moments ago, earlier, he's asked that question by a family member, a damsel in the chief priest's palace. She asked him if he knew Jesus. Why? Because you remember that guy who uh, got his ear sliced off? Well, this was a family member. And family members don't forget. So she's like, I just saw you basically cut my cousin's head off. And you're trying to tell me you don't know Jesus? You see, I'm not worried about Peter knowing or not knowing Jesus. I'm worried if I know Jesus. I'm worried if you know Jesus. The disciples go on their way in fear. Peter, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane in anguish and prays where Jesus had just finished praying. And then we find the last character to this story. Judas not only leaves Jesus, he actually says, I know the guy. Yeah, he's the one that I give the smooch to. That's the sign. I know him. I'll get you close to him. Huh. Judas could recognize Jesus. But Judas wanted nothing to do with Jesus. You see, what was in Judas' plan was, oh, I know that Jesus, if he's arrested, he'll do like his Samson impersonation and get free. Because he is the Messiah. And once he is crowned the Messiah, guess who they're going to look at who was next to the Messiah? 
Oh, that's right. That's me. I'm the one with my picture in the paper. I'm the one with the plaque. I'm the one with the recognition. And yet he wanted nothing to do with Jesus. He betrays Jesus for, for how much? 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver was the equivalency of what somebody would pay for a slave. Wow. Jesus sold for the price of a slave. Huh. There was something that Judas wanted. The problem is it just wasn't Jesus. My question is, what is it that you want? Because to get what I want, I'm going to have to give something up. And for some reason, it always comes back to Jesus. Because when I want something besides Jesus, I, can, I only have one or two choices. Just like Adam and Eve did in the garden. It's either the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and what? Evil. Hmm. Whether it was by the disciples who forsook him, whether it was by Peter who denied him, or whether it was by Judas who betrayed him. Here's the truth of the matter. Jesus ends up all by himself. So what does this have to do with communion? Very simple. Today Jesus tells us one thing. Don't forget me. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Don't forget the one who has died so that you may not only have eternal life, but so that you may be with him. I praise God because our amazing God has never forsaken us. I praise God because he's never denied us. I praise God because he's never betrayed us. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 6, verse 37. The Bible says, John 6, 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. That is the word of God to you and to me. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what sin you've committed. The Bible says, him or her that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. As Jesus was by himself and Pilate standing before the people, Pilate knowing that Jesus was an innocent man, a just and righteous man, wanting to set Jesus free, and the people said, let his blood be on us. And Pilate responded, so what do I do with Jesus? And they responded in one accord, crucify him. Pilate knew there was nothing else he could do. Though the Jewish nation in rejecting Christ in this request, of having their blood be on them was not an act of grace per se, but rather it was one of rejecting the sacrifice, sacrificial lamb. 
But today, I recognize that I need the blood of Jesus. How about you? Today we can come to the Father in Jesus' name. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you what? Somebody here today is in unrest. Somebody here today is resting with sin. Somebody here today has made decisions that they're not happy about. Today we can come to Jesus. Today we can say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Today we can come to Jesus and to know that he's still the one who wants to be with us. And to get rid of this sin, this thing between us and him, he has paid the price. I don't know about you, but I want to come to Jesus today. How about you? Don't forget me, he said. Do this in remembrance of me. As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we practice open communion. What does that mean? That means that if you're a believer in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are welcome to participate in our communion service, even though you're not a Seventh-day Adventist. Before we partake of the sacred emblems, the unleavened bread and the unfermented wine, also known as juice, um, we follow Jesus' example of being, of serving one another, of humbling ourselves before one another, just as Jesus did. And so, we have a couple rooms set up, one for the ladies, one for the men uh, in the Sabbath, children's Sabbath school classes. We also have the Better Living Center, the building behind here, that way, that is set up for married couples if you'd like to serve one another in this uh, service of humility, washing one another's feet. This is the time to get closer to each other because that's what the blood of Jesus does. It draws us to God and to each other. If there is something that we need to make right with the brother and sister, if we haven't done that already, it's good to do so now. And then we'll come back to this place and partake of the Lord's Supper. At this time as we separate, uh, the children's story will be happening uh, that uh, Sayuri will be giving. May we seek the Lord and seek our brother and sister in Christ. May the Lord bless us. I'd like to invite all the children to come forward for the children's story. It is now time for your story.
Okay. No, boys and one girl. Two girls with me. All right. Hi. I want to teach you to start the story a little song. Actually, my husband's going to teach us the song too. Hi. Okay, the name of the song is Good Morning. Good morning. <laughs> so easy, huh? All right. So you're going to help me teach them the song. It goes like this. It's really simple. It goes like this. Good morning. It's, it's God's morning. morning. Where the skies are cloudy or gray. Good morning. It's God's morning. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hey. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. All right. Let's sing it. Good morning, it's God's morning, where the skies are cloudy or gray. Good morning, it's God's morning, hope you have a wonderful day. Hey! <laughs> Do you know that one of my favorite books is this one right here. Here, What's the title of the book? Firebird, yes. And it's a story of a little tiny bird that talked to mom. Now, birds talk to their moms? They kind of do in their own bird language. <laughs> well, here it says that there was this tiny little bird and his name was Thunder, uh, Firebird. And Firebird loved playing outside. Do you love playing outside? Yeah, me too, sometimes. <laughs> And little Firebird, he loved the sun. Do you love, love sunny days? Or do you like cloudy days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Firebird, he loved, but you know, he didn't like rainy days. And he would tell his mommy, Mommy, why? Why do we have to have the rain? And the mommy would say, don't worry, Firebird. One day you'll understand why we need the, the rain. But I don't like it. And he did not like the rain because he couldn't play. You see how sad he is? Yeah, he looked kind of like this little guy right here. You see? And little Firebird, he loved playing, but when it was raining, he couldn't play, so he would be just so upset about that. There he is. And then one day, the mom said, well, Firebird, you're going to understand one day. And one day, from far, they could see that the rain was coming. Uh-oh. And the mommy said, now you're going to understand. Okay, Firebird, this is what I want you to do. As it started raining, she said, start flying. Fly high up. Up, 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 you go. And he was like, are you sure, mommy? Yes, fly, 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 fly. He started flying, but it was kind of scary. And he would get up and down, and he was just so scared. But all of a sudden, after he went through all that rain, he came to the sun. And he said, oh, this is beautiful. And now he understood that after the rain comes the sun, sunny days. And now every time it would rain, he would start playing around in the rain because he thought, you know, the sun is going to come. Now, sometimes we have cloudy days and sad days. But you know, have you ever noticed that the birds, they sing even if it's raining? Yeah, most of the birds do. And so when it's cloudy and it's rainy, remember, the sun is going to come out. That means God's going to get you through this. So today we're going to do something. Since the birds sing, and we just learned a song about singing and saying, good morning, it's God's morning, I'm going to let you borrow a bird. There's different kinds of birds here that Sister um, Mary Rollins let us borrow. And so we're going to... We're going to press the little birds here, and as they are singing, we are going to sing with them. Good morning. It's God's morning. So here you go. There's a bunch of birds. They all make noises. Pick one, and we're going to sing with the birds. <laughs> I know. Sounds a little bit like a donkey. Can you press your bird? Squeeze it here, honey. Right here. 
Is this a bee? That looks like. I don't. Really if it doesn't sound, pick another one. Yeah. Can you help him with this? Do you want to use this one instead? Yeah. Press it. Huh? <laughs> That's a, <laughs> a turkey. <laughs> All right, everybody has one? Here, give this one to Bill. And here's this blue bird for you. There you go. No? Here, you can have the ducky. You want another one? Here you go. All right, ready? One, two, three. Good morning, it's God's morning. Where the skies are cloudy or gray. Good morning, it's God's morning. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hey, good morning, it's God's morning. Where the skies are cloudy or gray. Good morning, it's God's morning. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hey, hey. Good job. All right, remember next time it gets sad and cloudy, remember that the birds sing, so you start singing to God. Amen. You could put the birds back and you could go back to your seat. Thank you. Good job.
as we meet to seek the Lord in these sacred emblems, the Bible gives us instruction for all that we do, even the Lord's Supper. And so at this time, uh, Elder Doug Dietrich will share uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, instruction that Paul gives us in regards to the Lord's Supper. Uh, Paul writes, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant of, in my blood. This do, as often as you think, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let the, a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. At this moment, those who are serving on the platform will be kneeling as uh, Elder Bill Marshall will have the blessing over these emblems. You may remain seated. Father, we come again to you this morning, remembering your great sacrifice as an exhibit of your great love and forgiveness. We ask that you bless these emblems of your body, that we may remember your great sacrifice in our need for salvation. And we ask these things in your son's name. Amen.
Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us partake of the unleavened bread. Jesus continued saying, this is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake. As we receive the grace of God, we all have the opportunity to share the grace of God. And so on our way out, there will be uh, an opportunity to give a benevolent offering for the needs within the, the church family. But scripture teaches that when they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. And we too shall do the same. I'd like to invite you to stand as we sing the words of hymn number 318. Through the blood of Jesus, we are whiter than snow. Let us all stand.